Hello everyone. Welcome to the FT Share channel. In this video, we will discuss the two devices that function to mix fuel and air, namely the injection and the carburetor. We will discuss the advantages and disadvantages of each of these devices. And we hope that this video will certainly help all of you to evaluate which of the two is more suitable for your needs. And for those of you who are interested in further discussion about each of these devices, we also have a separate video. So you can check out the video link in the description column below. And without further ado, here is the discussion. Basically, these two devices have a function to mix fuel and air at the right ratio. For the first device, the carburetor. This tool has a working mechanism that is highly dependent on the engine capacity and engine speed. Because as we know that when the intake step occurs, there will be a negative pressure that produces suction power. Now with this low pressure or vacuum causes the movement of gasoline and air through the main jet when venturi is open. But on the other hand, due to this mechanism of operation, the fuel mixture ratio with this carburetor is fixed or cannot be changed as needed at any RPM. And to change the air fuel ratio, we have to change the carburetor settings. For example, to change the carburetor settings for more power, we can change the size of the main jet to be larger, but the effect will make fuel consumption inefficient, and vice versa. Now we enter the camp of the biggest competitor, the injection system. The injector can set the amount of fuel through the ECU, which calculates inputs based on data variables obtained from several sensors. Other sensors include the oxygen sensor, throttle, manifold pressure, gyro sensor, crankshaft sensor, and engine speed. The data from each sensor is accumulated to produce a good air-fuel mixture and estimate fuel output in various conditions. The injector's fuel output can differ in each engine condition. One of the sensors used in the engine is the temperature sensor. For instance, the temperature sensor is responsible for regulating the engine's temperature. When the engine is started in cold conditions, the ECU extends the electrical power to the injector to provide more fuel allowing the vehicle to heat up faster. This is why the injector engine does not require a choke. The second example pertains to the function of the oxygen sensor. When the engine is driven at high RPM and the ECU detects exhaust gases with high oxygen levels, the ECU will respond by increasing fuel supply. The goal is to prevent power loss and ensure the engine continues to work optimally. This principle applies vice versa. In addition, Injectors can still be customized like carburetors by manipulating PWM through a computer by performing remapping. PWM stands for pulse width modulation, which is used to regulate the opening and closing of the injection. In a four-stroke engine with injectors, the injection will open and close every one power cycle. As we know from the previous video about four-stroke engines, there are two engine rotations in one power cycle. So, the percentage of injector opening will be calculated as the duty cycle percentage, which is based on one power cycle in a four-stroke engine. This means that the duty cycle at different RPMs will also result in different pulse widths. However, this is not the end of the story. The pulse width or duty cycle can vary in different engine conditions. The ECU will adjust the calculation based on input data from all the sensors we previously discussed. To illustrate, if the duty cycle in standard engine conditions is 12.5% and the engine is cold, then the sensor will command an increase in the length of the duty cycle. At 1,000 revolutions per minute, in cold engine conditions due to being newly started, the ECU will provide additional fuel by extending the duty cycle by 12.5%. This results in a PWM of 30 milliseconds, which means there will be more fuel supplied to the combustion chamber to increase the explosion until the engine reaches the ideal temperature. The same goes for other sensors. Their goal is to maintain engine performance in highly variable conditions and terrains. Now let's talk about the pros and cons of both components. We'll start with injection. The first advantage of injection is that you can customize the fuel supply more easily. For instance, you can simply change the injector specs and then map the PWM. You can also adjust the vehicle for fuel efficiency or power. However, the downside is that the equipment for setting it up is more expensive than a screwdriver. The second advantage is that it saves fuel because fuel efficiency is higher. The third advantage is that it produces maximum power at every engine revolution. And the fourth is that it is more environmentally friendly compared to carburetors. 
Let's talk about the drawbacks of injection. Firstly, it relies too much on sensors, which are quite numerous. If there's a malfunction in just one component, it will disrupt the fuel supply calculations. This directly impacts engine power, exhaust gas, and fuel efficiency. Ultimately, this can lead to a decline in performance compared to carburetors in all aspects. Secondly, maintenance costs are higher. It's a trade-off compared to carburetors. While the cost is higher, it's less frequent compared to the cheaper, but more regular maintenance of carburetors. Thirdly, maintenance costs tend to be higher each time there's a breakdown, including parts associated with the injector. And fifthly, it's clear that its durability or longevity isn't as good as carburetors. Carburetors have been tested and proven over time, and they continue to be in demand. Now we move on to the opposite camp, namely the carburetor. The first is it's easy to adjust the fuel delivery with just a screwdriver to chase either power or fuel efficiency. The second is durability tends to be better compared to injection. However, we have to adjust and maintain it frequently. And the third is the ease of finding a shop that can fix the carburetor if there is a problem with this tool while we are on the road. As for the disadvantages, the first is that the exhaust emissions tend to be higher. Usually, the exhaust will be dirtier and certainly cause irritation to the eyes. The second is that it's harder to find the right balance between power and fuel efficiency. The third is that it tends to waste more fuel compared to injection under the same standard conditions. And the fourth is less optimal power in some engine speed conditions because the carburetor settings are fixed. We've covered all the advantages and disadvantages of both the injector and carburetor. We're not drawing any conclusions here because everyone has different needs, requirements, and tastes. If you want to share your conclusions based on your personal experiences, write them in the comments section below. We can discuss them and read them together, especially for friends who are still confused about choosing between a carburetor or an injector. That's all the information we can provide in this video about injection and carburetor. Thanks for watching.